Hi everyone, we are live and I am going to be speaking today, I'm very excited, with Melanie Dune and um, let me just invite her. Um, Melanie and I, and let me actually first put a link to her photo. She is in our sale, the Vital Impact sale, but more importantly, I have known Melanie since I was 14 years old. And very different paths. Let me just find her again. Do, 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 do. Um, here we go. So you are in for a treat today when Melanie joins us. Um, she is there she is <laughs> 14 was no 14 was like a minute it ago it was hi thank you hi hello from rainy oh, new york oh my goodness City. um and ha how are you happy new year happy new year to you too i'm great i woke up today with a great sense of <laughs> purpose and no resolutions and a uh, spirit of forward march. Well, let, gosh, for, let's jump in because a lot of people are um, tuning in and this is for our Vital Impacts winner collection, which you're a part of. And I thought maybe, I mean, if people, let me put the link in again, please go and look at this image. Melanie, can you tell us a little bit about how you thought of this image? How did it happen? Sure, absolutely. I also have to say, I just saw fifty dollars was. Oh donated. my god! So I yay! Can't... I hope that while we while we're here spilling secrets, uh, we could quadruple, <laughs> quadruple it. <laughs> so donate, donate okay. while we speak. So um, Amy, I'm so happy to see you. And it is true that we're friends since we were 14 and we started in the same dark room. Um, so that is a trip and a half. And now here we are fast forward a few years. Um, I'm honored to be part of uh, the Vital Impact sale. There's such amazing work in there and I just moved. So I'm sort of planning and plotting what I'm gonna add to my wall. Um, but the image, actually, you picked the image, which I thought was really interesting to donate to the sale, um, because unfortunately, I have no pandas in my well, archives. I, I, but see, I, um, so, you know, I actually love this, Melanie. I love that, you know, you can care about the world and the environment and, and humanity, and it doesn't mean you have to be just specifically taking pictures of wildlife if you care about wildlife, for example. And I... You, you add so much, much diversity and such, a, I mean, it is such a moving, inspiring image. And also, I mean, we'll get to this later too, but I, I mean, you always are advocating. Since we were 14, I remember you were advocating to free Mandela. Like, I mean, you've always been a great advocate. <laughs> That's true. That's true. True. Um, no, it is true. It doesn't really matter how you, where you are. You don't have to be in a certain genre or a certain box. You can always um, use, you know, you can always donate. You can always help. You can always share. And I was very moved to be asked. And the image actually was one of the first times I've ever photographed a model, which is uh, such a different um, thing because as you know, and maybe nobody else does, but I usually photograph people. Um, at least that's how I started. And then from there, you know, the world takes you on a twisty road. Um, but I, you know, and mostly a lot of them, the beginning part of my career was celebrities. Um, so with this model, I had this wonderful chance to sort of, she would just stand there. You know, she had no attitude. She didn't need a cappuccino. She just did whatever um, I said. And I just couldn't get the photograph. And, you know, I always believe, like, you just keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. Um, but again, move fast. And I decided, oh, we were in a photo studio. And I had two lights lit, you know, flashing lights, pro photo lights. And I, it wasn't working. And I thought, I'll turn off the lights get my tripod and just use the available light and see what happens. It and then voila. Is, I love this story. I didn't actually know the whole story behind it, but it's called Wonder Woman. And I actually think it's. Yes, because it inspired me. You know, the, the, my actions, I was like, hey, you can turn anything around. Like, hey, 
don't be stuck that this picture isn't working and the pictures are lovely, but it could have been better. And that sort of made me feel empowered in the way she's looking up. And in other frames, she's just, you know, lifting her dress and dropping her dress. And I just, it just made me feel strong for lack of a better explanation. That. And it's such a, you know, for all the photographers out there, it's true. I mean, I think we all hit walls a lot. And, and sometimes our best images are total. Act, I mean, it's almost like you have to hit that wall to get to that next place and push yourself. Yeah. And not be scared of the wall because that's one thing, I guess that's advancing age, but now I'm sort of going towards the wall as part of it, you know, and I used to say, oh, I hate limbo and it drives me crazy. And, you know, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do in this shoot. Good. Because oh, that's when the magic that. happens. And you, and, you know, and also, can you talk about, I mean, you have photographed at, at, and you started actually way before this whole movement to photograph you know chefs and and the whole i mean melanie was one of the pioneers i mean when did you do that like 25 30 years ago Ooh, let's not date ourselves <laughs> no I, I i was photographing celebrities which i loved and was so interesting and what i loved about it was that you always found out you know, what was the latest movie opening or the latest, um, and I was at, you know, current event, and I was photographing, um, actually, Anthony Bourdain for Men's Journal magazine, and it was incredible because he was doing so much um, interesting work. He was not on a TV show yet. He had just released a book called Kitchen Confidential. And I got a little peek through him because he kept requesting me to photograph him. I got a little peek in sort of to this chef world then I got asked to do more photo shoots and more photo shoots of chefs. And I thought, wow, we, this is a movement. And that's actually something I really like to do with my photography. And so do you. I remember when we were kids, you went to Guinea-Bissau to cover a story. I mean, I think we're similar in the way that we see or hear about a topic and we go and try to uncover it and understand oh, I, it. I that's what happened with love that. I mean, that I... I get so many letters asking, I think people think it's all about travel, you know, one genre, travel photography, but it is really about going deep into whatever yeah. it is. If you, and and yes. you definitely did that. And I, and there's, I mean, your book, is that, are any of those books still available? The um, um, Yes, but barely. My Last Supper one is um, in the second printing and it's almost out of print. And wow. number two wow. is around, yeah. Yeah, they're good. They're interesting. I mean, for the food lover. They're in your really life. good books. So, <laughs> please. But actually, you know, the truth is, I've done six books, and the other books were different. You know, not as successful because, of course, every project we do doesn't succeed. Um, the the between the two books, my last supper, I did a book about country music because I was um, photographing the singer who I hadn't heard of, to be honest, and don't hate male me, but Kenny Chesney, who's a super, super star um, in the country music world. And I, I got so many um, comments and interest in country music. And I thought, I better investigate what is this country music? Um, and I spent a year sort of uh, del one month a, a week, uh, one week a month traveling around exploring country music um the book didn't do so well but i don't do that for it's the an result. amazing i do it for i mean i remember that it's an amazing book but it it's yeah it's i guess that's so interesting i mean so much is about the publicity too isn't it and how and marketing and all of that but i mean i was i remember i was sitting in the um country music hall of fame which then cost 30 dollars to enter and my book was twenty nine ninety nine because you know they always price books never to be thirty dollars. It's like ninety nine, so it doesn't seem as expensive. Little secret, little tip. And um, somebody said to me, "A book? Like what? What are we? A thirty dollars for a book?" And I was like, "But you just paid thirty dollars to come into this museum." So I think that uh, that book didn't succeed in the uh, numbers game, but it did in my heart for lack of a yeah. better way to describe. Well, well, let's back up and actually, can you tell us a little bit about some of the projects you've advocated for and why did you decide to become part of Vital Impacts too? Um, uh, 
Um, well, I think that, you know, I can't, I live in New York City and there are a lot of fundraisers and galas and people are always asking me for money and particularly to support causes. And of course, if I um, was William Buffett, I might, well, maybe not him, but Melinda Gates, I could write more checks. Um, but I realized quickly that I couldn't spend $25,000 for a table at an event. But what I could do is use my photography. I could donate it to auctions. I could take a hospital and I could photograph for them pro bono. They get really good work. And then I have donated, you know, something that's important and valuable. So I think my most successful one is a few, I, I just talked about it a few weeks ago on my actual Instagram. And it was um, just about this local food charity and um, they weren't doing a good job of sort of explaining to New York City who they were. So I said, um, let's call up a bunch of celebrities. You're turning 30, let's call 30 celebrities. Let's take them into iconic places in New York, shoot them, then it's up to you. And they contacted an advertising agency and it's the only time I've had a billboard oh in God. Times Square and buses and, and they raised $5 million. Oh so it was a huge success, you know? So I think that when um, all of those you know, causes are just different ways, right? Just like vital impacts. I mean, it was a no brainer. Um, to, I would have said yes, whether or not you were involved, but of course, definitely yes, because you're involved. It's a wonderful way to share love and art and um, mm -hmm. community. Oh, I love that. Thank you, Melanie. That is, that is very inspiring. And, and, and everybody, if you need a little inspiration, Melanie is the woman of idea. Like just go follow her work because I would describe you as one of the most diverse photographers. I know you, and you and go deep on on everything that you you decide to do. It's all in. It's not like, oh, I'll just. And um, um, I guess I want to ask one to know a couple one. of questions. So, <laughs> what do you love? Like, why are you a photographer? What do you love about it? And what do you hate about it? Um. What I love so much is this, it's a very powerful um, medium because you are able to transfer information. That is my goal. I remember when I was starting out, there were those famous pictures of Annie Leibovitz, of Demi Moore by Annie Leibovitz pregnant. There were so many fabulous celebrity portraits, which is how I started. And I remember thinking, oh, Annie Leibovitz did an interesting job. Annie Leibovitz did an interesting photograph. And I, I thought to myself, I don't want people to look at that photo and say, oh, Melanie Dunay. I want people to look at that photo and say, oh, that person is that. So I love the fact that it's an incredible medium to transfer information quickly, um, which is also a dangerous thing. So on the flip side, if that's abused, that can be something that is definitely um, not my favorite part of it. And also it's, you know, not to, I mean, I'm, we're in good company here, but uh, it's a lot of work and I feel um, like I'm icing my elbow right now because my camera's heavy. <laughs> I figure nobody would know. Um, but, you know, I, I think it's a, uh, it's a, a wonderful tool and medium and it should be used carefully. Mm -hmm. That is true. I mean, can you, do you want to talk about any, any story? Oh, give examples? Oh, sure. I have, a, I have a crazy one, but it's pretty, uh, I mean, the first one that comes to my mind is I was photographing Bernie Mac, who is a black comedian for the cover of New York Magazine. And um, in Los Angeles, he had a show called The Bernie Mac Show, and I was behind the scenes waiting to take the pictures. And, you know, in that case, you get 10 or 15 minutes and you have to be completely ready. And of course, I need to get three or four scenarios. So my team and I have been there for two hours, at least practicing over and over and over. So we're ready to go, you know, like a military operation. And uh, I decided it would be really funny to put a zipper over his mouth because it would um, be like the cover would say, you know, Bernie, Matt can't stop telling jokes or he's so funny. We've got to like quiet him down. And um, a few months, it was a very successful photo. It did really well. It won American photography, whatever. Then I saw it on the 
front page of the London Sunday Times, a photocopy of hundreds of people holding it up. And it was a protest by the um, Thomas Jefferson Society who were denying that uh, Thomas Jefferson had a relationship with Sally Hemings. And they, um, I mean, they were holding it up saying, please be quiet, people. And I, of course, completely freaked out. Um, and so did Bernie Mac, because it was hanging in his kitchen. And all of a sudden, the, you know, the tone of the photograph had changed. And I, I thought, what can I do? What can I do? I've got to stop this. Um, but I can't sue them, just like I can't buy a table at the, uh, you know. Um, so I decided that I would have my lawyer ask them for a handwritten apology note, which was pretty good. <laughs> that was painful for them. <laughs> So, you know, there's an example of a photograph being completely... Yeah, and you know, you know, you bring up a really interesting subject. This also has happened to me, and I think we feel powerless in today's world of social media where things just go viral in a second. You wake up and one of your images is used out of context for something totally inappropriate. And it's like, what do you do? And I just, I think people should know you actually can get things stopped. It's a lot of work. But there's something called a DCMA takedown notice if it's being used on social media. And um, I, DCMA called, takedown maybe? notice. I actually wrote a blog about this and, and I got it um, published and because everybody was sharing one of my images, including like the BBC and um, Michelle Obama. And I mean, because people thought it was genuinely a good cause, but they didn't realize they had taken an image of a human being without her permission to be used for some, you know, it, it was a complicated issue. But I, I will say that it's important to know your rights. And if you're anybody's listening and interested, you can definitely get back in touch with me and I can forward you information what you do when things are taken out of place. But yeah, but that's, that's great. I didn't yeah, even know that. But, that's great but it's anyway, you're right. That, that does happen. And so um, what advice would you give people that want to be doing what you're doing, Melanie? Ooh, la la. Um, well, I would say that I guess just to figure out your intention, you know, what, what is, I mean, my intention has always been from day one to transfer information, literally. Like, what is this and how can I, what's the story? Um, so I would say my greatest asset that I have is that I actually understand Understand light and I understand the basics. We both took classes to understand, you know, this is a light meter, this is an f stop, this is an aperture. Um, so I feel like once you have a classic basis, which you can learn in many ways, I'm not saying photo school at all. You could be an, an intern, an apprentice, you could take a, probably a YouTube class these days, but you need to understand those things because then. You can photograph anything. I, I had a really wonderful show, another project I did. People kept, after the chef book, people kept calling me a food photographer. And I'm so not, it's so disrespectful to food photographers. So I thought, well, if people keep telling you you're something, look at it. So I went around New York City and I photographed food, French fries, pizza, you know, things that I liked by myself just for fun to see if I am a food photographer. And um, the funny thing was, it ended up being a really wonderful collection that I named Don't Play With Your Food, that I showed by myself in a pop-up space. And I heard someone when I walked in say, oh, did she take these with an iPhone? I mean, of course I didn't, but I thought, you know, because I understand how to do it, yeah. I can do anything. So I do feel like that fundamental, like what happens if your, your flash breaks? What, what do you do? Do you take someone by a window? Do you take, you know, understanding light is, is and your, your gear. But I only, I mean, I, you know, I, I have a camera that's like the second edition digital. I mean, it's, it's not fancy. I don't have a but it, ton of cameras. Do you? Well, I'm a you know I I'm a Nikon girl, so I'm I'm I switched to the mirrorless. Oh. So I'm 
using that now. But but I um, this is so interesting. I mean, it is really back to the basics. It really everything is about light. I mean, photography that is painting with light. But um, yeah, and yeah. and so what else? I mean, I know that there's probably people. I mean, I I wonder if it's also your personality though, because you have to deal with people and what I mean. How does your personality play into that? Do you? Well, I mean, that's another interesting thing that I also think. You know, once you have the um, basics, so that it's like baking, right? I mean, you know, okay, you need to you need, you pretty pretty much need butter in every recipe, unless you're vegan. You pretty much need. Um, so, um, I think that the, the, the other thing is a sensitivity, which you have a tremendous sensitivity to stand back and listen and watch. I mean, when I go on a shoot, I talk a lot, actually, surprise, surprise. And I'm, I, if you asked me what I said, I'd have no idea. All I'm doing is watching and engaging and trying to see who these people are quickly. And of course, I mean, it's my opinion. It's not the God spell, you know, but um, I think the personality is definitely key and respect for who you're photographing. May it be a rhinoceros or a person. It's do you do a lot thing. of research before you photograph somebody? That's a good question. Um, I kind of don't. Um, I get too, I think I prefer to see someone on face value. Though the problem with that is then you have no talking points. And that's another one of my great beliefs is sure, take photography, understand, but you know what? Take a French class, read the newspaper because you need other skills to talk to people. I mean, I did, when I was doing the French book, three of the interviews took place in French. Um, thank goodness I know French. So all of the extra things I mean, I read the newspaper every day, not every word at all, but I get a lot of ideas from the newspaper, their conversation pieces there. So the, you know, you can bring the big wide world to mm -hmm. a photo shoot. Mm -hmm. That's, that is great advice. Um, yeah, and any other, gosh, I'm just trying to think, what other tips do you have for people? You know, know what you want, right? Like if you're going, I mean, of course we, we are, we're both hired often and then we do our own projects. I mean, that's a very important thing that I don't think people realize. We both have to keep the, we both have lights on at our house. So, <laughs> and um, I don't know if every trip to Riteti has <laughs> helped keep those lights on for you. So I think that um, it is important to understand that there's art and commerce. And this is a business. I mean, I'm a CEO of a business. So I do a lot of photo shoots. If you take your Ziploc box and Rachel Ray is holding a Ziploc, I took that picture. Um, so, you know, there is definitely a lot of, um, you have to understand that it's not all just pandas. and. So how do you find <laughs> time? I mean, do you actually create time for your personal projects? Do you carve it out? Do you create a schedule? Because I think, for most of us, it's always a challenge just to not when to, yeah. is that, sorry, that's kind of a. Well, I'm doing one and actually I'm doing one, I'm shooting one the 17th, 18th, 19th of this month. And I have actually carved out time. It's in a photo studio. There's a big crew, there's a big production. Um, but I would do other projects like uh, Don't Play With Your Food or My Last Supper or Precious, my book. Um, I would always, because those are so expensive, I would tack them into my, what I'm doing. So let's say I was in Kenya, now I'm pretending to be you. Um, I would say, oh, well, while I'm here, maybe I could, yeah. there's a chef I could photograph. So. I think you have to kind of balance, be about, you know, it's a balance thing. It's a multitasking. Well, Melanie, this is so, I'm so grateful. And everybody, I'm going to put her a link again into her photo. Please go look at all of her, her work, you. actually. Um, not just wow. Thank you, Amy. You're the best. Does anybody, do we just want to ask? Oh, I never do that. Questions? Does anybody have any questions? Yeah. I mean, we're here and I can actually see them because I wore my glasses. 
Whoop. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but it's so, no, I don't think so. I'm not seeing any, which is uh, good. Yeah, so, so the easier. questions will come after we hang up. But, um, yes. Thank you so much for having me, Amy. And I can't wait to see Vital Impacts get more bigger and bigger. And, you know, what you're doing is incredible. And it's so helpful. And it's a challenge. I mean, it is a challenge. But we're, oh, here, man. we're behind All you. Of you. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Bye. Big kiss. Happy Bye. New Year. Happy New Year. Bye. 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 Bye.